All right, we are in concept three of unit one, which is dimensional analysis and scientific notation. So these are two more, I call them math skills, that you really need to know and understand as we move forward into all of the other content we're going to learn this year. So again, this is just kind of foundational stuff that we need to know. So you've already learned temperature conversions and metric conversions. And if you did my long way with metric conversions, dimensional analysis is going to be so easy. Um, but if you've been taking shortcuts on it, now it's going to be harder. So hopefully you did it the long way the first time, and we'll see how it goes. So dimensional analysis, the purpose of this is it's just a technique, and we're going to use it to convert numbers into different units without changing their value. So you did this with metric conversions, changing kilograms to milligrams. You're just using different ver uh, versions, but you were working within the same family. You were in the grams family or the meter family, going from centimeters to meters. Here, we're going to change families. So we can jump from liters to cups or pounds to milligrams, that kind of thing. So this is really, really useful when you're baking or cooking. Um, you'll have to do this a lot. Like if you lose your tablespoon, but you have a teaspoon, you can figure out how to, many you would need of each. Also, traveling to foreign countries that use different units from us, um, like in the airport, you know, you can't have a bag more than 50 pounds, but when you're in Europe, how many kilograms is that? So you'd be able to do these types of conversions. Also really important for building or engineering, so if that's a field you're interested in, this is something you would need to be able to do. We accomplish this by multiplying given numbers by conversion factors in order to get our number into desired units. And I've been mentioning conversion factors in the metric conversion notes and the measurement notes we just took, um, but now let's get a definition in our notes. They are ratios of equivalent values, meaning they equal one. That's why we're able to use them to convert units without changing the value of the measurement. So we use them in dimensional analysis when we want to alter the number, again, without changing its value. So an example of a conversion factor. How many hours are in a day? Well, most of us know there are 24 hours in one day. I can use that as a conversion factor. So I can write it as 24 hours divided by one day or one day divided by 24 hours. Either way you do this, that equals one, which is why I'm able to use it as a conversion factor. So both of these formats could be useful. Another example, 12 inches is a foot. Most of us know that. So you could write that as 12 inches divided by one foot or one foot divided by 12 inches because both ways that conversion factor equals one. So you try. What would be the conversion factor for days in a week? Good job. Seven days equals one week or seven days over one week or one week over seven days. All right, so the steps to apply this into a real problem that you would get are exactly like the metric conversion steps, so that is awesome. You write down the given number and unit, draw your picket fence, use the chart to fill in appropriate conversion factors, making sure they're on opposite sides of the fence to cancel out, multiply across the top and the bottom, and then divide. So let's start off with one that you probably know these conversion factors in your head already. How many seconds are in one year? So first, what do we know? We know one year. Step two, draw your picket fence. All right, step three. I don't know how many seconds are in a year, but I do know that there's 365 days, usually if it's not a leap year, in a year. So one year is 365 days. Now, why did I put it this way instead of the opposite? Well, I want the year units opposite of each other. All right, now, I don't know how many seconds are in a day, but I know that there are 24 hours in one day. And then I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. And then I also know that there's 60 seconds in one minute. Again, I'm putting the like units opposite so they will cross out. So all I'm left with is what I'm looking for. Then I multiply across the top. So 1 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And then 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. That's nice and easy. And then I divide. And that's how you get your final answer. Right, another example, how many feet are in 250.4 centimeters? Well, first, write the given unit and, or number in unit, which is 250.4 centimeters. Step two, draw your picket fence. Step three, fill in appropriate conversion factors. Again, I don't know how many centimeters in a foot, but on the chart that I will give you of conversion factors, it will tell you there's 2.54 centimeters in one inch. 
So I can use that. And then I know that there's 12 inches in one foot. I multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then divide. And that's how you get your answer. So 250.4 centimeters is the same as 8.22 feet. All right, so these are the conversion factors I will give you. So you will always have these to use on an assessment. You do not need to memorize these. You just need to know how to work with them. All right, so use this, and I want you to do this next slide. All right, so I want you to pause, and I want you to do these conversions. I know I could just skip through and give you the answers, which I'm going to do, but I really want you to pause and do this so that you know what you're doing. And then when you're ready, here are your answers. All right, the last math skill we need to practice is scientific notation. So the purpose of this is we're going to rewrite really large or really small numbers into a format that just makes it easier to use and see and work with. And that format is just the digits with a decimal point after the first digit, followed by times 10 to the power, which represents how many places the decimal was moved. So that is a lot of words for something that's a lot simpler if you just look at it. So, for example, 50,500 is kind of a decently large number. It's not that big. But I would write it as the first digit, which is 5, and then a decimal point with the other digits times 10 to the fourth because to get this decimal here from here, I had to move it four times. One, two, three, four to get it there. We will write out these steps don't worry, but this is just what I mean by the format of what it's going to look like. It's always going to be a digit and then the decimal point. So here are the steps. First, move the decimal so that there's only one digit in front to the left of it. Then you're going to rewrite the number as that digit, decimal, and then any other digits that are there. If there's no other digits, you just put a zero and then put times 10 after it. Then you need to add an exponent right here to represent the number of places that you move that decimal in step one. So did you move it three times, four, twice, once, what did you do? Now, for that exponent, you need to determine if it should be positive or negative. The easiest way that I remember this is positive if you started with a big number, so a number greater than one. So like when we had 50,500, that's a big number, so it was positive exponent. Or it's negative if you start with a small number, so a number less than 1, like 0 .0023, I would use a negative exponent when putting that into scientific notation. I think if we do some examples, this will make way more sense. So let's put it into practice. All right, convert 100, 101,000 into scientific notation. All right, so this is where my decimal is. When it's not written in, it's right here. But I want it to be right here. All right, so that's where it is now. That's where I want it to be. Count how many times you're going to have to move it to get it there. All right, so to get it there, because that's where I want it, right there, I'm going to have to move it five times. All right, one, two, three, four, five. That's how many times I didn't move it. Now, this is positive because it was a large number to start with. That's how I knew that that was positive. All right, so that is your final answer, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth. All right, example number six, convert 0 0.0098 into scientific notation. So first, here's my decimal. I want it to be here in scientific notation. So I want it to be 9.8 times 10 to however many times I move it. So if I'm going to move that decimal, I'm going to have to move it one, two, three times. Now, it's going to be a negative 3 because this is a small number. This is a number less than 1 that I'm starting with. So that's why I'm going to make it negative exponent. That's your final answer. All right, now, the only other way you would see this is we can go the other direction. So we can go to standard notation, which would be to take it out of scientific notation and just make it a normal number. So this is honestly even easier. So when I'm looking at this, all I need to do is look right here. This is just going to tell you how many times you need to move the decimal. So I'm going to move the decimal twice. Now, because it's positive, I'm going to make this a bigger number. So I'm going to move the decimal this way to make it bigger. All right, so 2 means I'm going to move the decimal twice. Positive means I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to move it 1, 2 times. And then I just rewrite it, 205.7. All right, let's try another. Convert 3.1 times 10 to the negative 4 into standard notation. So we're just taking it out of scientific notation. So 
I'm going to move it four times, and negative means I'm going to make this a smaller number. So this time I'm going to go this way. So one, two, three, four. That's where my new decimal is going to go. Now what goes here? You just fill those in with zeros. And then rewrite point zero 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 three one. All right. Now if you feel better going one direction versus the other, you can always double check. So move this back and see if you can get it back into the scientific notation you started with. All right, pause the video now and try these. And there are your answers to know if you did it right. And now we're gonna practice this so much in class so that you are scientific notation champs.